Today, you can't talk about polarization without talking about us, the media. The media environment is constantly changing. Back when there were just three networks, the content was pretty much the same all across all three of them. There weren't any major differences in content and so forth. So everybody pretty much viewed the same kinds of news. Now you have a huge range of choices. And what this means is that people can really self-select the kind of news that they'd like to hear much Isn't more Isn't that easily. a good thing, though? More choice should be people what we like all aspire it. to. The problem is more at a collective level. How do we talk to one another when we're all listening to different voices? <laughs> Water. I'm I am. I'm the asking the question. CIA May I? agent in a time of war. That's all I'm asking. I want you to join. I don't think anybody. I, want you, I didn't hear anybody. General, call let me him finish, please. Conflict, just like violence on television, is always going to attract people's attention. We've stated had abuses in the you, past. Stated we don't your need more. Up for the well, time. you've stated But let me tell you, totally. the public. It's very exciting to watch a fight. It's not that exciting to watch a calm conversation. The thing that we all tend to forget is that In her lab at the University of Pennsylvania, Diana Mutz has conducted experiments on the impact of so-called shout TV. She's found that people who tune into all this shouting are more likely to misunderstand and to demonize those who disagree with them. Shout television does polarize their views. It makes them more convinced of the rightness of their own views and of the lack of any merit in the opposition. They basically hear only one side. That's right. They don't hear the other side. Uh, and as a result of that, they come away feeling more strongly how they felt to begin with. Why did you single out freedom of the press to say it was the soldiers that defended it and not the reporters? What? We all know that. Why did you say it? Well, because I thought it uh, needed to be said at this particular time. Because, because you could get on the God's line against the media at a conservative convention. Arousal interferes with our encoding of information cognitively in our brains, and as a result, uh, we're just overwhelmed emotionally. Look, what did Jim I'm Jeffers, believe, switch wait, Jim Jeffers say to you? Jim what Jeffers, never mind, switch parties if after you're getting elected. Ask a question. Well, that's a tough if question. Got, it's for example, words. in the experiments that we've been talking about, um, people remember very, very little uh, about the reasons that the others hold oppositional viewpoints when they're watching it in a highly emotional, in-your-face kind of context. Get out of my face. If you're going to ask me a question, step back and let me ask. <laughs> And if you ask them afterwards, they will systematically know a lot less about why the other side thinks the way it does. You've been gripped, yet you, yet you end up walking away learning less. They're having a good time. They enjoy watching it, and they find it interesting, but they're not learning a whole lot. I wish we lived in the day where you could challenge a person to a duel. Now that would be pretty good. TV is hot and getting hotter. But it's tame compared to the internet. On the web, the debate is down and dirty every day. You twit, each that's how we talk in DC. About eight million people log on to political blogs or partisan web journals every day. What they find, what they create, are virtual communities of like-minded partisans. The key danger is that by appealing to emotions, bloggers can intensify the polarization that already exists. It's like throwing you know, raw meat to the lions, and some blogs do that very intentionally. Dan Burstein writes about the blogosphere and its impact on politics. These days we've got thousands and thousands of people publishing political points of view and information, sometimes not even on a daily basis, several times a day. Some of these people are uh, doing it for ulterior motives, and some of these people are doing it to hear themselves talk, and some of these people are psychos. The result can be that people believe things they read on blogs and they move into a more of a locked-in position and we get uh, the left and the right and, and the divisions over different political issues 
forming two really warring camps. This hostility echoes through Congress. Just when you think you have seen it all, the Republicans have stooped to a new law. Terrorists who would destroy the, the gentleman will suspend. The House will come to order. One minute, Absolutely I appalled at this minute, action. It is a cheap political stunt. It brings incredible shame to this House. 